newspaper of the 16th of December 1940 lists Natural Bridge as a freak of nature. Speaking of which, here's a freak of nature. This is Tony from T-Rock. Say hi, Tony. Hi, Tony. We had the uh, bolts on his neck tightened this morning. We're just arriving at Mermaid Beach and Tony's going to do some sand something. You're going to test for radiation. Yes, we're yeah, going to have radiation. the radiation levels of the black sand exposed by Cyclone Alfred. All right, that's our first stop. Six a.m. to six p.m. Saturday to Sunday, no standing. The funny thing is, when you see one of these signs, suddenly you forget how to read English and comprehend <laughs> times and dates. Well, that's Saturday, and Sunday, public holiday, September to April. They could have made this a little bit easier. Let's do the math on this one. Damn, I broke my four-dollar glasses, Rob. The erosion here is phenomenal, and they got a warning sign here about unstable conditions. Stay in close, do not stand or play on the sand cliff. Supervise your kids, beware of holes. Tony says the black sand down there is radioactive, so I'm going to stay here. It's about an 11, is that bad? So Tony's got his radiation readings and we're going to Burley now, are we? Correct. Burley. Alright, we're going to Burley now. Theatre? Mm -hmm. Is it Burley Theatre Arcade? Just arrived at Burley Heads. What do we got? Well, Rob, what we've got here is some very fine grain sandstone. Sandstone. It's certainly right. not volcanic. And, uh, oh, well, it's a national park. He's taking his aggression out on the geology. <laughs> so would that be from, like, a shoreline or from a desert? Yes, yeah, so I suspect the shoreline has been lifted. The shoreline's been lifted, yes, okay. Lifted. All right. We walked three metres, we found something else. <laughs> These are shales. That shale? And definitely not sandstone. Sort of a shaley mudstone. The break of the thing is it's not really a rock, just slightly rocky. How old would that be? This is really old. I suspect this is um, three to four hundred million years old. This three would to be ocean, years ocean ocean sediments probably. Ocean sediments, all right. Get that for sure. Shells. Yeah. Tony's just found a shell, shell midden. Wow. Oh look, there's one down here. Well folks, here we are just on the side of the track at Burley. And there's another I was talking first. Much higher. So how high would this midden have been then? Because obviously you've got the slope coming down here, so that's buried it as this slipped down? Well, I suspect that the sea level was up here. Okay. Remember back 4,000 years ago, sea level was 5 metres higher than it is now. So that was this was probably the coast here somewhere. So we've got an indigenous shell midden right here on this pathway uh, at Burley Heads. Tony thinks it could be a few thousand years old. The sea level back then, he says, would have been higher? That is really interesting. Wow. This area was surveyed by a guy. Oh, look at that. So this is lava from the Tweed volcano, and now it's eroded and tumbled down here, being undermined probably the by the that, little the stream. It's in these big, uh, these big uh, polygonal columns. Mm. means it cooled very slowly underground. OK. There was a hot spot, a weakness in the mantle, and as Australia passed over it heading north, it would periodically force magma to the surface, creating volcanoes. This means that the older volcanoes are in North Queensland, while the youngest are in Victoria. The Tweed volcano erupted in stages between 24 and 23 million years ago. We're walking up Burley Heads now, and this area was surveyed by James Warner. The reason why he called it Burley was simply because he saw how big and strong the, um, the mountain here looked, so he called it Burley, but as in B-U-R-L-Y. Later on, the spelling was corrupted to what we're used to now. In terms of the wildlife up here, I've only seen some water dragons. I haven't seen any snakes or spiders or yowies. 
I just saw the biggest spider I've ever seen. Did you get a footage of it? Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, he's been eating people. Okay, so I have now seen water dragons and a spider. A beautiful seat, a scenic view of nothing at all. Trees, yeah. Chop them. All right, so you can see those rocks down there. That's your basalt rock. That's from the Tweed Volcano. So that's where we're standing. We're standing on this lava flow from the Tweed Volcano. And over the, the millions of years, the rocks have split and eroded and they've tumbled down. So the rocks you see down the bottom there where the, the waves are crashing, that's, they were originally up here. Yeah, I saw those. So the Shield Volcano extended all the way out to here. Into the ocean, wow. probably. That's incredible to think yeah. that when you come up here, really think about that, that this was all molten lava once and part of one of the largest shield volcanoes ever discovered. Oh, I've also been bitten by a lot of mosquitoes as well. Tony says it's because I'm wearing a blue shirt, but I don't know if I believe him. I'm just taking a look on the map here because um, we've... Um, we don't know where we're going. So, Tony, how's the day going? Oh, it's awesome, mate. It's thank, awesome. Thank you for lunch, Rob. Thank you very much. You You're welcome. Lunch. He ordered Just three so lobsters, <laughs> caviar. So we're in a Suzuki Swift, aren't we? <laughs> and there's a car in front of us, and that's called a Getz. But unfortunately, it gets in our way. Now we're heading to, um, to Best of All, the Best of All Lookout. And if you haven't been there, you should absolutely go and check that out. Incredible views from up there. As we drive higher up into the Springbrook Mountains, it reminds me of Mount Barney. Now, Mount Barney has a similar history to the Tweed Volcano. It was also a product of the hotspot under here 24 million years ago. Just arrived at best of all. Wow, pretty cool. Oh shit! Have you got an umbrella? I got a poncho. I got a poncho. Hey Cisco, my poncho. Look at this. Wow, look at that. Now this is incredible, these trees here these are Antarctic beech trees. This was from the ancient Gondwana rainforest at a time when Australia and Antarctica were joined together. These massive trees here are a remnant of that primordial rainforest. And there are other Antarctic beech trees still scattered around this area. They are confined to southern Queensland and northern New South Wales. In fact, these are the most northerly Antarctic beech trees in Australia. And finally, after all this time, approaching the best of all lookout. And check this absolute whiteout. Now, you're going to have to take my word for it. Out there is an absolutely stunning landscape, a post-volcanic caldera, which is the largest in the southern hemisphere. Trust me, it's there. 
You see that thing that you can't see in the distance? That's not Mount Warning. It erupted during the Chattian and Aquitanian eras. Beautiful. You see, Mount Warning is the plug. It's the thing that is the remainder of the main, what do you call it, where the magma went up? Yes. Yeah, that was, that was the volcano. That hardened. Everything else around it, pretty much everything else around it, eroded away. We call it Mount Warning, but the whole thing that it was that it created is what we call the Tweed Volcano. At its height, back in the day, it was 2,000 meters above sea level. So 2,000 meters, that means that the height of the Tweed Volcano was about twice the height of the current Mount Warning. After this area moved over the hotspot, as Australia continued to move northwards, the volcano became extinct and that's when erosion uh, from rain and the stream started to erode this area eventually creating the caldera and what I find very interesting is that the eastern side of the caldera is more weathered than the western side you can see on this satellite photo the western side of the caldera is much more intact and that is simply because of the rain coming in from the coral sea and the pacific ocean more rain on the eastern side eroded it more quickly than on the western side. Normally, if you'd be standing here on a sunny day, you could see Mount Warning and countryside and mountains and valleys and gullies. It's out there somewhere. So here we are at Natural Bridge. Natural Bridge is part of the Numanbar Valley and this is also part of that erosion process of the former Tweed Volcano. It's raining a little bit here but it's absolutely beautiful. And there's also nobody here. This really is spectacular. Look at the size of those trees. Oh my god. It was timber getters in the 1870s who most likely were the first Europeans to come across Natural Bridge. And I can only imagine how they would have reacted to it when they saw it. I'm not quite there yet, but I can hear the water that flows through it. getting darker and darker the closer we get to Natural Bridge. The water that you see flowing through Natural Bridge is known as Cave Creek. It's a tributary of the Narang River. Now down there in the cave where we just were, that's the home of glowworms. Apparently they are also like the Antarctic beaches, a remnant from the ancient Gondwana rainforest. I think it was still too early in the uh, afternoon or early evening for them to come out. We couldn't see them. All right, so Tony, tell me about this rock. <laughs> 
Beachmont Basalt, right there. Black Beachmont Basalt. 20 or so million years old. It was reported in the South Coast Bulletin of the 5th of May 1933 that people from Brisbane were driving down here to plunder exotic plants and orchids from this area and uh, taking them back to their homes in Brisbane. It was really becoming quite a problem. Ideas were put forth about how to police this area to stop all the plants being stolen. Natural Bridge was declared a recreation and scenic reserve in 1922. It then became a national park in 1959 and was incorporated into the Springbrook National Park in 1990. Okay, so that's our visit to Natural Bridge and also other areas around and within the old Tweed Volcano. Whoops. Uh, fascinating and beautiful place. Stunningly beautiful. Um, what do you reckon, Tony? Oh, I think it's just 10 out of 10. I love it. And we came here on a quiet Thursday. Nobody else here. And uh, raining and mist and beautiful and cool too. All that humidity from down on the coast. Not here. So. What a wonderful journey. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider hitting that like and the subscribe button. And uh, thank you once again, Tony, for, uh, for this collaboration. Thank you, Rob. Anytime. Yeah, and uh, I'll see you again soon.